Hey there, movie buffs, and welcome to another review of a 2024 release. In this episode, I'll be covering yet another horror title, The Experimental in a Violent Nature. Spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen the movie, add this to your YouTube watch list and come back later. Despite still currently in theaters and also on video on demand, something that hurt the movie's chances, Chris Nash's title made some waves and already napped $4.5 million domestically, placing it on IFC Films, one of the studios behind the title, list of the 10 highest grossing films of all time. The promotional materials promised a truly exciting and innovative horror experience, but we the audience have been duped by similar pledges time and time again. Just this year, Late Night with the Devil, another 2024 IFC shuttered joint venture, failed, at least in my opinion, to live up to the hype. So, does Chris Nash's innovative ambient horror deliver the goods, or is it just another case of a hyped up horror entry of the week? In a Violent Nature follows a typical slasher framework. A group of teens on holiday takes a locket from a collapsed fire tower in the woods. The locket just so happened to be located over the natural grave of Johnny, a vengeful spirit anchored to a horrific 70-year-old crime. As the teens take the locket, Johnny's rotting corpse is awakened from his slumber. After disposing of his first victim, Johnny heads towards the house in which the teens are staying. The group of friends, unaware of Johnny's resurrection, sits around a campfire, while one of them recounts Johnny's tragic past. A developmentally delayed boy tricked into climbing a fire tower for a bag of toys, only to fall to his death. Johnny's spirit is said to be responsible for two series of murders, decades apart. The undead killer soon embarks on a bloody rampage to retrieve the stolen locket, methodically slaughtering anyone who gets in his way. As these unhappy campers get slaughtered away in quite violent manners and easily disposed of by our anti-hero Johnny, we can't help but ask a question. Who will survive and what will be left of them? When it finally came time to watch In a Violent Nature, I was a bit conflicted without really knowing what to expect. On one hand, the trailers looked promising and hinted at an interesting 180 degree turn on a subgenre I love. On the other hand, when the first reviews came in, courtesy of an early release date in the US, I could sense that the risky take on the iconic 1980s horror tropes didn't necessarily live up to the standard. Now that I've watched it, let me assess with you the movie's pros and cons. In a Violent Nature does have an interesting premise. Director Chris Nash removes all the seemingly critical aspects we came to expect from a slasher entry. The eerie score with its musical cues that warn us of the carnage ahead and the seemingly endless stock of teen characters whose names we will never remember. Instead, he focuses on delivering a movie that does cater to the voyeuristic needs of your regular Friday the 13th enjoyer, but with an intentional detachment that takes us on a regular safari as we get to observe Johnny as a wild, enigmatic figure who roams free since he has been awakened from his slumber and whose true motivations and desires remain elusive and unknowable. By reducing the visual horror to its purest essence and through both minimalist and observational angles, Nash invites audiences to do something no slasher had ever done before. Reflect. The problem is that the director doesn't fully commit to the whole thing. It would be easy to reduce In a Violent Nature to a flawed, experimental piece that seeks to tinker with and amplify the elements that worked so well in such distinct and iconic classics like Alien and Halloween, with a heavy dose of slow cinema thrown in for good measure. The movie does amount to more than just a collection of unbroken moments that take POV shots to the next level. But just as we're getting into the third act, the audience bumps into something surprising. The focus of the movie shifts completely, going from showing the killer's perspective and documenting his actions to a more conventional narrative structure as we follow the proverbial final girl. This change feels more traditional compared to the unconventional approach we are exposed to up to that point. For roughly 70 minutes we are treated to a symbiotic relationship where the victim and assailant are connected by a common object, the weapon of the crime, existing at the same time with the camera, capturing the raw truth of the moment. 
The camera is, as it should be, a sentient being staring, much like Johnny, at whatever it wants, whenever it wants, acting as a risk taker. Someone that wants to take the audience a step further. This setting suddenly shifts to more convenient angles and completely changes things. Don't get me wrong, the final sequences are tense and very well executed. Maybe the finest I've ever seen in a slasher, but they just feel out of place. Back to the positives, and there are many. We find a title that succeeds on the three fronts that, in my opinion, make or break a slasher. Gory kills, stellar practical effects, and a great villain. The movie is simply outstanding when it comes to a vehicle that delivers gory and gruesome carnage. By the end of it, you may not remember any of the victims, but you'll remember their demise. Most of the deaths are incredible works of art, a combination of the macabre and practical effects that takes us back to a time when this sadistic brand of voyeurism assured slashers a top spot at the box office. The effects are that good, and the prosthetics, well, they're even greater. As for good old Johnny, we get glimpses of his backstory, but as an unstoppable force of nature, he ranks up there with Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees, iconic killers whose life stories could fill up encyclopedias. The whole movie is about this monster and Johnny's perspective as he silently navigates the woods. Johnny's smoking mask is iconic enough not to feel too derivative. But the nice cinematography and great visuals don't make up for that little something that seems to be missing. There may be no climax, but there are certainly plenty of homage shots and creative decisions that seem to hold the movie back. As I mentioned, you still get the backstory and even a tone of meta-commentary as the movie pokes fun of the kind of woke dialogue that grace our modern-day horror flicks. But these two seem out of place. Also, even though there's no real explanation behind Johnny's motives, is it the locket, revenge, mummy issues, we still get plenty of Oedipal throwbacks that anchored the supposedly innovative movie to a territory that had already been explored by titles ranging from Psycho to Friday the 13th. Still, kudos to director Chris Nash for making the movie he wanted to see and not the one audiences expect. In a day and age when we are bombarded with pedantic and shallow elevated horror pieces, in a violent nature goes all in and mostly hits the mark, delivering something good. The vibe is off the charts. I do not subscribe, however, to the more philosophical analysis the movie tries to deliver. The banality of violence and the nature versus nurture debate on brutal impulses. The already announced sequel seems like a very brash move that will probably destroy any goodwill and cult following that the movie has amassed in case it fails. When, or maybe if, the sequel fails to deliver, you can expect the kind of backlash David Fincher's Alien 3 received. A title that sort of invalidates the previous entry and ruins all the positive feelings people had towards it. That said, Chris Nash keeps us guessing and even as we follow the killer, precluding any jump scares, we are still tense. Low expectations and an open mind are required to enjoy this one.